I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Unfortunately, much to no one's surprise, the tentative so-called ceasefire with Gaza has come to an end, as terror groups in the Strip fired over 200 rockets towards southern Israeli civilian communities on Saturday. In fact, red alert sirens were sounded all across Rehovot, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Sterot, and others, and two houses suffered direct hits, causing at least one woman and another man to suffer serious injuries after being struck by shrapnel. Additionally, several others, including a 15-year-old boy, were also wounded either by shrapnel, debris, or by injuries sustained while running for shelter. Well, in response, the Israeli army destroyed at least 70 terror targets belonging to Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror groups, killing two combatants and wounding another two. The IDF also destroyed another cross-border terror tunnel operated by the Islamic Jihad, which was reportedly being accelerated ahead of a potential attack, according to the terror group itself. Therefore, as of this writing, the IDF operations against Gaza are still ongoing, especially as rocket sirens in Israel were sounded for the first time as far as Beit Shemesh, just 12 miles west of Jerusalem. Thankfully, however, the damage was vastly reduced by the Iron Dome missile defense system, which did intercept dozens of projectiles, and it's now on standby in central Israel as well. Further, the Gaza fishing zone and crossings were all closed, and reservists have been called up for duty ahead of an expected several days of conflict. Additionally, these rocket attacks also come just a day after two Israeli soldiers were shot at and injured while on patrol near the southern border. And it's also two days after several other rockets were fired from Gaza as well, though those rockets fell into the Mediterranean off of the central Israeli coast. And Israel responded as usual against Hamas just afterwards, as the terror group is held responsible for any attacks that emanate from the territory they control. Though the Hamas and the Islamic Jihad terror groups contend that Israel is to blame for the violence, because Israel apparently hasn't held up its end of the ceasefire. But this is disingenuous, as Hamas never stopped its violence to begin with either. In fact, amidst all this rocket fire and even before, over the past few weeks, Hamas organized riots along the border have continued as usual, with thousands of Palestinians attempting to damage or infiltrate the border, sending explosives and incendiary balloons into Israel, and more. Meanwhile, ironically, senior Hamas official Yahya Sinwar is in Egypt now, attempting to broker another ceasefire. But Israel seems to have had enough of their two-faced promises and is unlikely to let up so easily so soon. I don't know if there's a lull or if there's no lull right now. We're a bit on the edge because we just saw from behind us three launches, flares of rocket attacks. And it's just near this community of 800 people. So we're going to go next to the shelter. We have exactly 10 seconds to run to the shelter if there is a rocket attack. Right now, there is no rocket attack, but it's very close from here. So we're running to some sort of improvised shelter that Igor Basilenko, our cameraman, is going to show you. This is a cylinder made of uh, cement and there is a wall which is protecting that cylinder and in order to avoid the shrapnels from entering this cylinder, Igor, come to us. And there are about 
10 people who can be here. Oh, Barilan is a third generation member of this kibbutz community. She's been living here all her life. She's 23 years old. Or there's been nine hours of incessant attacks here. How do you feel? To be honest, right now, my heart is beating very fast. We had a massive explosion now. And I'm sorry, it's a bit difficult to find the words, especially when you translate into another language. It just, it's a difficult day as usual. We always have these days, but you can never get used to it. It looks like you, you think, oh, for 20 years they're living this situation. Maybe they get used to it. No, no, you cannot get used to have a threat, a direct threat to your life. It, you just cannot. You were born basically when rockets started falling on Israeli territory from the Gaza Strip, three years after you were born, actually. Yeah. It's, it's what I remember for my entire life, from playing in the kindergarten, from going to high school, when I do my SAT that we have in Israel. And everything I do, we always have it in our lives, surrounding our lives, everything based on it. Now we hear on our cell phones, we hear on our cell phones the red alerts and the red alerts very close to this place. Here, there is, there is an alert. Yevgeny, get in, get in. Okay. Okay. There is a rocket. We can hear. We just heard an interception. A second interception. A second interception. It's, even if it's not an interception, how can you know? <laughs> you cannot know. know. We, we, we can know because we've heard, uh, the, we've, got, we've heard the noise of an anti-missile battery. We believe it's an interception. Yes, but you noted in the kibbutz next to here, I work in the kindergarten, and one of the girls in my kindergarten, uh, a part of the Iron Dome, fell on their house. The, it was an explosion. It blew up the rocket, but... It still it it fall it fell on the house, so you still need to stay in the safe room. It's not funny. He, Do you want to peep out, peep outside and see what's what's going on? In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict, and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12:2 and 3. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples, when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day, that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Dramatic escalation between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. You're looking at the Gaza skyline there with several explosions ringing out. The Gaza Health Ministry just in the last few minutes confirming the death of Hamid Ahmed Abdul Qadari, a 34-year-old who is reported to be a Hamas field commander. Uh, that would reportedly be in an Israeli airstrike and a targeted killing would signal a new phase in the way Israel is responding to what has been over 500 rockets fired from Gaza towards Israeli communities. More on that strike in a moment, but let's first jump to our Elon Livy in the Israeli area of Kfar Aza off the border. Elon, what's the latest from you there? Nari, just moments ago we heard a large barrage of rockets coming from the Gaza Strip just behind us. If you'd uh, joined us just a few minutes ago, you would have seen the plume of smoke in the air. Very loud booms uh, overhead a few minutes ago at three, seven, eight minutes local time. Uh, a barrage of rockets from the Gaza Strip towards the local area. Uh, here the village of Kfar Aza is extremely silent. Uh, 210,000 children are staying home, all children within a 25-mile uh, radius of the Gaza Strip. That means their parents are with them, the city of Stirot, Many restaurants and shops are simply closed because parents need to be together with their children. Uh, unsure whether the situation is going to pass, these conflagrations have a habit of disappearing as quickly as they come, or as we move now to a new stage of targeted killings and indeed fatalities on the Israeli side. Let's stress the first Israeli death since the 2014 war. Perhaps we might have shifted gear and need to hunker down for a bumpier ride. Elon, you've been reporting in several areas around there, including the city of Sderot. Tell us a little bit about the damage that you witnessed there and also what residents are telling you. What, what are their fears at this moment and what would they like to see happen? 
Residents here are anxious and weary as well. This is a reality that many of them are used to. Uh, if you ask any residents whether they slept last night in the bomb shelter, by which I mean the whole family in the bomb shelter, they look at you like you're a little bit crazy and say, well, of course we did. Anyone with their head screwed on their shoulders sleeps in the bomb shelter because you have only 10 seconds to run for shelter, if that. Last night at about 2 in the morning, a rocket struck a kindergarten in Sterot. It hit inside the sand pit uh, in the yard outside. Shrapnel flew everywhere, flying through the concrete walls of the kindergarten. If it had been daytime, we would have been looking uh, quite possibly at a massacre of special needs children. Uh, that rocket also managed to cause immense damage to the nearby apartments. One apartment we inspected had disabled residents. They had only just been moved out for the weekend in order to change the furniture, but if they had been there overnight, they would not have been able to move to the safe space in time, and they too could have been killed. Let's jump back to that breaking news from the last few minutes. The Gaza Health uh, Ministry, rather, confirming a targeted killing carried out by Israel. You're seeing pictures that purporting to show that strike there. The Gaza Health Ministry says this is Hamed Ahmed Abdul Qadari, a 34-year-old Hamas field commander. Uh, Jacques Neria is still here with me in the studio. Jacques, when we hear reports of a targeted killing, that is potentially a new phase in how Israel is choosing to react to this rocket fire. How significant or not is that? There's a difference between field commanders and, uh, and the Hamas leaders. Right. We are not there yet. We are targeting field commanders, those who are operating the missiles. And this is, this is the main target, not to stop firing missiles on Israel and to hit those operatives already on the ground. This is the stage at this point. Let me just make a, a, a statement concerning Hamas. Hamas is not an existential threat to Israel, but the way beha Israel behaves vis-a-vis -vis Hamas is learned far away in the north with Hezbollah. If Hezbollah understands that Israel is not able to subdue Hamas, then it has lots of significance to, towards the a, a possible conflict, future conflict between us and Hezbollah. This is the main issue today. It's not the fight between us and Hamas. It is not a limited fight between two, uh, two, uh, two factions. It's beyond that. It's beyond our borders. Our defense correspondent Daniel Tzemach joining us uh, once again from Jerusalem where that security cabinet meeting is being held now. Daniel, what's the latest you can tell us about how Israel is poised to react to this? Well, Nuri, we actually have the first word from that security cabinet meeting. According to a security official, that the uh, they are instructing the Israeli military, the Israeli security cabinet is instructing the military to continue its strikes in Gaza and to uh, embolden or to reinforce the forces that are currently on the Israel-Gaza border. Now, important to mention here that just a few hours ago, before the security cabinet meeting commenced, the Israeli Prime Minister and Defense Minister Benjamin Netanyahu decided to reinforce uh, the forces at the border with an armored brigade artillery brigade as well as infantry brigades. So we saw this a few weeks ago when there was an escalation, but now given how volatile the situation is and the fact that the rockets are continuing to fly over in southern Israel, it only goes to show that this really is heading uh, towards a very, very uh, tense moment now between the two sides. As you said, Nareed, we understand that the targeted killing, uh, when we, the initial reports are that it is indeed a field commander of Hamas. Now that targeted killing definitely also shows a slight uptick in regards to the Israeli uh, response and the type and the nature of the Israeli strikes in Gaza. And so uh, from what we understand, this situation will continue and the Israeli military response will continue. That's the latest we have uh, from that security cabinet meeting. God gives a dire warning for the nations that come against Jerusalem as we read in Zechariah 12.3. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. Moshe Agadi, a 58-year-old Israeli father of four, was murdered by shrapnel early Sunday morning when a terrorist rocket launched from Gaza landed on his home. And this makes Agadi the first Israeli rocket fatality since 2014. This, as over 450 rockets and counting, also continue to fall indiscriminately on southern Israeli communities, injuring nine other Israelis as well, including an 80-year-old woman, a man, and a teenage boy. While in response to the strikes, Israel has returned fire on at least 120 terror targets in Gaza, including a cross-border attack tunnel, an underground rocket factory, and terror group leaders' homes. At least two enemy combatants have also been killed, and several others have been reportedly injured. Meanwhile, the various terror groups in the Strip, including Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, have vowed for their part to now increase the range of their rockets should Israel continue to retaliate. 
Therefore, central Israeli towns are now also ordering shelters to be opened, while red alert sirens continue to sound off. Thankfully, however, most of the indiscriminate rockets aimed at civilian population centers have fallen into open areas, though, or back within the Gaza Strip. Though one did kill a mother and child in Gaza, which Hamas tried to pin on Israel initially. But after investigation into the claims, the IDF has concluded with confidence that, quote, their unfortunate deaths were not the result of Israeli weaponry, but rather a Hamas rocket that was fired and exploded not where it was supposed to. In fact, even Palestinian sources like Palestinian Authority negotiator Saeb el condemned their deaths, tweeting, murdering a 37-year-old pregnant Palestine Abu Arar and her infant 14-month-old Saba is not and cannot be self-defense. And contrary to Hamas's rhetoric, this latest escalation all began with rocket fire on Wednesday and then sniper fire aimed at two IDF officers on patrol near the border. The officers were injured, though, but are in stable condition. And Israel responded with airstrikes that Hamas then claims initiated the flare-up. But further still, this all comes at the heels of continued cross-border violence on the part of Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, among others. Though ironically, the various terror groups hold that Israel hasn't lived up to its half of the tentative ceasefire, and in fact, just ahead of launching this latest barrage, Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar arrived in Egypt to attempt to broker another ceasefire. But Israel has had enough, with Foreign Ministry official Emmanuel Nachshon calling on the international community to condemn the unacceptable Palestinian violence, while Prime Minister Netanyahu and the IDF called up reserve soldiers to the border ahead of an expected several days of conflict. Now speaking of Palestinian threats, as the violence and tensions across the south continue to rise, Iranian proxy terror groups Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad are now threatening to ratchet up their attacks should Israel continue to retaliate. In fact, aside from vowing to aim deeper into Israel, targeting cities as far as Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and more, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad terror group is now also threatening to attack Israel's Dimona nuclear reactor, the Ashdod seaport, refineries in Haifa, and Tel Aviv's Ben Gurion airport. The Iranian-backed terror group released a video Saturday with both Hebrew and Arabic text that showed Islamic Jihad terrorists loading a missile launcher while interspersing images of sensitive targets in Israel. And this while rockets continued to rain down on southern Israeli civilian communities. Further, these targets are nothing to scoff at, as an attack on any one of them could cause massive damages and casualties, and both the terrorists and Israel know it. Additionally, while Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, among others, are all contributing to the current wave of violence, Israel blamed the Islamic Jihad alone for the two rockets last week that kicked off the latest conflict, ahead of the shooting of two IDF soldiers on patrol as well. And indeed, Islamic Jihad is not afraid to increase their attacks. Though thankfully, those two rockets landed in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of central Israel rather than causing any damages. And the two soldiers who were shot are in stable condition. This latest escalation is far from being caused by Israel's so-called aggression. Rather, Israel is forcefully responding to yet another attempt to terrorize civilians. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death. 
but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.